Hey there. Hi everyone, Elizabeth Scala here. I'm sitting in my vehicle after getting home from my longest drive yet. So I've had elbow surgery. My surgery date was August 14th. I was unable to drive uh, for quite some time. We are making this video in May and I'm only just here proud to tell you I drove for an hour. What am I here to tell you about? Well, elbow surgery and driving. First of all, I had a lot of complications. So my arm is still stuck. It's not straightening. Your arm may be moving fine in the video. But if your arm is stiff, if your arm is stuck, if it's locked, here's your video about driving. So uh, first and foremost, I wasn't able to drive because right out of surgery and in the immediate month after, I was on narcotic um, pain medications prescribed. So if you're on opioids or narcotics, you know, don't operate machinery um, if you're drowsy or otherwise. Then what happened? Okay, so that went away. Then pain. Like I had physical pain in my elbow. Um, every bump, every jolt in the road, every time you'd go from pavement to bridge or, you know, even a jerk of the car, my arm would physically start to hurt. I, I literally said to my husband one time, I can't fall asleep while you're driving. Like I'd like to fall asleep, but I can't because if I was sleeping and then we hit a bump, like, oh, my arm would be, you know, in so much pain. So I literally brought pillows to put, you know, and cushion underneath my arm and I would brace myself. Like I'd be following what was happening in the road. I'd brace myself for the bumps. And then I needed help getting a, um, people to drive me to appointments or to all the nerve blocks that I had to receive for my complex regional pain syndrome, which was another complication of the surgery. Anyway, long story short. So how do you start driving? First of all, go with your gut. Go with when you feel ready. Don't let people say to you, we've got to get you driving. You need to be driving. If you don't feel comfortable driving, guess what? Driving is a serious thing. Like, we take it for granted, but holy moly, you are moving a vehicle, a big machine at a high speed with other people around you. Like if you don't feel ready to drive, don't drive. That being said, how did I begin? How did I get started? I took short trips. So first I would drive, my husband and I would walk on a walking trail, which is close to our house, five minutes away. And on the way home, he'd say, do you want to try? Do you want to drive? So I would drive with, um, somebody in the car with me. I would drive with my husband so that I wasn't alone. Those were my first few trips driving. Then I would feel comfortable alone, but not going long distances because here's one. I My long distance, I remember on February 26 was I had to go to another doctor for a nerve conduction study to see what was going on with the muscles and the spazzing of my arm. I didn't want to ask my neighbor for yet another ride. I didn't want my husband to take off work yet another day. So I said, you know what? It's 20 minutes away. It's in the middle of the afternoon. I can go. I'll do it. I'll leave early, super early. I'll get there, whatever. So I did. I left super early. I got there really early. I had my appointment. I got home. That afternoon, I took like a two-hour nap. And I typically am not a napper. So I was exhausted. The adrenaline from driving, the people around me, the cars whizzing by, me feeling, oh my gosh, I'm going too slow and everybody's getting impatient behind me. So I took a longer trip by myself, but I had to get myself there. And like I said, it knocked me on my butt. And then I did started taking my dog on short trips around my house, taking myself to do errands, like going to my grocery store myself, going to Home Depot by myself. And so I got more comfortable with shorter trips. And so now I am able to drive by myself short distances. And now today, proudly so, a one hour distance. So my lessons learned, my tips for you. Don't drive on pain medications. Don't drive when you're not feeling comfortable to drive. Don't drive if you're in a lot of pain. But once you, it, you'll know, you will know in your gut, you will know in your heart when it's time for you, when you're ready. So when you're ready, start small, bring a friend, a family member, and have them with you so you're not alone in case something happens or your arm gets tired. I mean, my arm would fatigue and I couldn't do it. So start short, start small, work your way up to driving alone on short trips. And then again, distances, distances. And before you know it, you'll be driving again. But 
it's so weird. You know, they say driving is something you don't forget. It's like riding a bicycle. And sure, it's just the sheer nature of like, I am driving this huge vehicle with people. Like it's, it could be dangerous. So, oh, and that's one more thing I'll say before I close. Make sure that you're sitting in a, a way where you can reach the steering wheel. So for a while, my arm was even more locked and I couldn't even reach it. Now I do feel comfortable reaching the steering wheel. So that's important too. So safe driving all you elbow surgery recovery patients. I'll see you on the road.